Maxine Waters is a congresswoman from Los Angeles who became particularly notable over comments she made about pushing back on the Trump administration. You know, when you see someone at a restaurant, you get in their face. This is being used far and wide in attack ads, and it's made Maxine Waters particularly relevant in this news cycle when you keep hearing calls for incivility. Well, it just so happens I was able to sit down with Omar Navarro, who is the Republican running against Maxine Waters. And this is a district that I believe is about D, uh, Democrats plus 29, so it's, it's a tough spot for a Republican to, to be in. But it looks like a couple years ago, Omar actually got about 26%, I, I believe it's about 26%. He rounds up, says around 30% of the vote. So it's, it might be a long shot, but it's not outside the realm of possibility that Omar actually upsets this district and, and wins the election. So I uh, introduce you now to Omar Navarro, and I hope you enjoy the interview. The man you are looking at right in front of me. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Omar Navarro. I'm running for Congress in the 43rd District of California. That includes uh, LAX, Hawthorne, Inglewood, uh, Torrance, half of it, 54% of it. You also have also cities like uh, Westchester, Playa del Rey. Uh, you have um, the city of uh, West Carson. You're challenging Maxine Waters. That's her district, right? Yeah. So you're the Republican going up against Maxine Waters. Yeah, I'm the Republican going against Maxine Waters. I won. I beat three, uh, three other candidates that were running against me in the in the uh, June election and I got through it pretty good I mean I got more votes than everybody else but the vote was very divided because there were other Republicans of course running uh, so it was very diluted so it looked like I got 14 percent of the vote but when in doubt I could get much higher close to 30 percent and if you look at the amount of money I've raised and the money mo money I've invested in going after Democrats and independent voters in the district that's going to be a big target and big difference especially the Latino base in the well, community that's all really interesting but yeah. what I've what, what makes it really interesting for me is Maxine Waters has been the subject of a bunch of GOP ads attacking the Democrats because she, you know, she did this, uh, it was like a rally or whatever, where she told people when you see this, these, you know, when you see these people get up in their faces, push back on them. And look, I don't think she's calling for violence. I think she's calling for people's God-given right to protest. However, we've seen a lot of incivility and we've seen an escalation into violence. And so, you know, for someone like me who's independent, I have a concern when I see a GOP candidate in Minnesota get knocked out by some guy who didn't like him, saw him in a restaurant, went and punched him in the head. You're challenging her. So this, this puts you in a really interesting position with the GOP targeting her almost specifically. Yeah, well, the GOP has been targeting her, and, and they've basically been making a case out of her to fundraise on other races and stuff like that. But again, I don't have the GOP support. Uh, and that's a big oh, factor really? also in the But in you're, you're a Republican, right? I'm a Republican, but doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to get right, that right. support from, from the party. So but I, what I've been doing is in spite of that, I've been get fundraising. I've been doing really well. I've been going out there, going to my community, talking to people. All, a lot of it was grassroots at the beginning, you know. We're running TV ads also, so that's going to be a big factor in the race and everything. But Maxine, is uh, she has no middle ground, you know. Like there is, it's just a little bit too much. She's too far to the left. I think we have to have a middle ground in its communities, especially like my community. I, I think I'm more of in the middle Republican more than anything. I'm not more far to the right or far to the left. I'm just in the middle. And I think that's what people need. They need someone that's going to work with other Democrats, is going to work with Republicans, and it's going to find solutions to problems like mental health, like the homeless problem. we got to figure out also what, what's going on in schools, too. Kids are not graduating, and, and they're not finding jobs. That's also a big concern in the economy, also. You know, for one, I don't live in your, in your district. But one of the big concerns for me has been the escalation of violence. Like I've talked about it time and time again, I actually slowly moved away from New York City because I think it's just getting crazy. I mean, for me, people notice, they know who I am, and it, it could be dangerous for me sometimes. So I'm just like, violence worries me. Mm -hmm. Maxine Waters contribu contributes to this, this, you know, this, with, with what she said. Well, it's a culture of violence, and, and that's, that's a problem right now. You have someone like Maxine, and then you have Hillary Clinton, and then you have the other... Uh, and, other and Hillary Clinton said, yeah. we can't be civil. Exactly, right? we can't be familiar. civil, and then the other guy says, we kick them when they go low. So, I mean, so that, that's already advocating for violence right there, and you don't do that. I mean, we have to really get back to where... There was at one time in our country where Democrats and Republicans were able to have political discussions and be able to respect each other and be able to go back home and, be, and, and sleep well. Now you can't go sleep well because you get angry at your at your cousin, at your sister, or brother, and you act like like you, you really physically want to hurt them sometimes. Like that's how people act. I mean, with each I other. don't, but I'm worried well, other I people don't, do. But, you know, but I see how people do, and I had that happen with family members where they act that way. They get out of control, and they truly believe that you know that Trump is a Nazi. They truly believe they're convinced in their own mind that Trump is uh, this evil dictator. And, 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 and I, they, I, they don't understand what Nazism is about. They don't understand what a dictatorship is. I mean, my family came from Cuba where they experienced what, what a dictator was, Fidel Castro. It's, so, it's, I mean, so that in itself, and then Maxine Waters also is going around supporting 
dictators like that, like Fidel Castro, she writing letters Fidel to Castro? them. She wrote a letter to Castro uh, to protect a cop killer that killed somebody. Oh, was it the one who fled yeah, to Cuba? Yeah, fled to Cuba, changed wow. her name. So, I mean, so this is the type of people that Maxine Waters is supporting. I mean, that's not, you don't do that. You don't write a letter to protect someone who killed somebody. And she was a Black Panther. But then itself, that you don't do that. That's an American. You don't do that. It's crazy to me that we're getting to this point. I'm... Everybody knows I'm a liberal. Mm -hmm. Like, you can look at the way I'm dressed. I'm wearing, like, a baseball tee, skate shoes, and a beanie, and you're wearing a suit. Yeah, but uh, but again, Republicans can be that way, too. No, no, so, but, I mean, right, right, of course, you know, T-shirts. Yeah. But I just mean, like... And I'm wearing a suit because I'm running for office, too. Right, right, right. <laughs> we're, we're at Politicon. You look at, yeah. you look at the stage, and you'll see, you can tell who the Republicans are. You can mm -hmm. tell who the liberals are. But it's not entirely true. There are a lot of liberals who are wearing, you know, suits and everything as well. But I feel like I've always been kind of a moderate person, but I find myself more interested in, in, in you know what the Democrats used to value. Mm -hmm. Now I'm sitting here and I look at someone like you who's like, you've got, you've, 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 there's probably some policy positions we, we'll talk about it, where I don't sure, agree with you. Not. But when you're like, hey, violence is bad and we got to do something about that, I'm like, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And then I look at what's happening with the violence of these, you know, these GOP people getting attacked. A woman got punched. A, a guy in Minnesota got knocked on, he got, he got a concussion. I mean, look at what happened with Rand Paul. I mean, oh like my the, God, he got that, broken ribs. Yeah, I mean, that's that was the Look, that's what scares I, I, me. When I saw that, I was like, it, it kind of went back to me, and I thought about it. I was like, wow, something like that's happening to someone like that. I mean, what can happen to me, someone that lives here? And I'm running against probably one of the most divisive people in this country, I believe. But one of the most divisive. St and, uh, Steve Scalise, right? Yeah. That was his name? St yeah. Steve, Steve Scalise. Yeah, someone was just talking to us about that. Look, I understand that we have these these fringe, you know, far-right guys, mm -hmm. these ultra-nationalists who commit acts of terror. Of course it happens. It's, yeah, it's, it's, that's out there. Right. But what we're talking about right now is... The targeting of just your, your average citizenry by political forces. I'll be more specific. When someone walks up to a guy wearing a mag hat and grabs it off his head and splashes a drink in his face, that's not. We're seeing so much yeah. of this kind of stuff. It's you know. So so let's talk a little bit about Maxine Waters, right? Obviously, you condemn the violence. Mm -hmm. Well, because I've, I've experienced it myself. I mean, going to Berkeley, going to going out and rallies, protests. That's how I started. I mean, I wouldn't have had a shot if I didn't start that way. You know, it was I was the outsider going into the race. I was the guy that was going out and rallies and the protests, and so, so I was you, having, I was getting pepper sprayed, I was getting uh, urine thrown at me, I was getting punched, and it, it, that's how I got noticed. That's how people started following me online, and they started seeing all this stuff, and that's how they said, "Well, no, this guy could take a punch." <laughs> I mean, that's the type of guy I would like to have in office, you know. So I think that's a, that's a big factor right now. And I, what I liked about Trump is that when Trump got elected, um, he he kind of inspired a lot of people that were just regular people that just wanted to. It started like some form of revolution against uh, the PC culture, you know. That right. that's yep. that's exactly why I ran. I was like, I didn't. I wanted to be myself. I wanted to run as Omar Navarro, not as Omar Navarro, the polished. Uh, Republican candidate that's running for office, that's establishment. I wanted to be the outsider who's coming into politics, wanting to change things for the better, and actually he's from the community because I, I was born and raised there. When I when I look at uh, Maxine Waters, the, the the only thing I really know about her because look, she's you know it's, it's a district. It's not like I live here, mm -hmm. but I see this rhetoric that contributes to this 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 dangerous, divisive uh, you know climate that we're in. But I'm not. I don't know. I don't know a lot about her policies. What I will say, though, is that's the most important thing to me right now is making sure our country isn't falling apart at the seams and that people aren't beating each other in the streets because I've, I've seen it on the ground. Maybe that's just me in my bubble. Maybe exactly. Because I follow the news and I see it so much, I think it's worse than it really is. But it is a concern to me. I'm not familiar with some of the other policies. So, so, so look, I've always been a left-leaning guy. I consider myself a social liberal. There's a lot of policies that I, that I find myself in line with that the Democrats do support, that Republicans well, what are don't. Those policies? I'm pro-choice. Okay. Right? Um, I do believe in social programs. Like that's why I like Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is a little too far left for me, and and he lost me with a lot of things that happened through the campaign. Endorsing Hillary was bad, and I'm not the only one who feels that way. You know, Bernie lost a lot of support because of some of those things he did. I hate identity politics, of course. But you know, pro-choice is big for me. Um, social programs, right? I mean, I don't want to get too specific because I want you to talk more than, than about what I what I believe. But I'm, I'm curious, outside of the violence issue. You know, why should, why, why should someone listen to you? Why should a moderate Democrat or left-leaning person like me value you over Maxine Waters well, first of outside all, of I'm, violence? I'm, I'm sitting down with someone who has a different set of beliefs than me, and I'm having a conversation with that person. You know, whether we stand on different on some issues, like I'm pro-life, you know, you're pro-choice, but I'm willing to respect your opinion and everything. I'm not going to attack you, vilify you for what you believe in. 
And I think that we have to show a level of maturity out in our country and make sure that we're getting people back together some way in unity. I mean, there, there's a lot of problems that are happening in our country right now, like mental health. Like, so there's, there are solutions to, pro to these problems, but people are not having a solution. They're just, just shouting, like, there's a problem there, but they're not coming up with any bills or any solutions to actually solve this thing. And, like, people like my opponent have only passed three bills in Congress in, in 27 years. So, I mean, Is that real? I mean, three bills in Congress in 27 years. I mean, that's concerning to me. Wow. Three bills. I'm, look, I, admittedly, I'm There's not. some congressman that can do three bills in, in one term. So, I mean, yeah. so that's, that, you have, she's had a lot of terms to, to do work, and she's probably not working. 95% of the time, she's had a good time in, in Congress, and the other 5%, she's actually worked. And for me, that's, 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 not, that's not what we should so, do. So, so she's why? running for president. She's trying to impeach him. On, is she on running what, for president? On what grounds? On what grounds is she trying to impeach the president? I mean, it's, it sounds like it to me. <laughs> when, really, when someone's yeah, going no after the president, like uh, the Avenatti guy, you know, when someone goes after the president in that way, they're trying to position themselves to run for that seat. And so, I mean, if she wants to run for president, great, go do that. You know, that's, that's good for you. But at the same time, don't don't let other people suffer in your own community that you should be re representing What's, and bringing jobs back into the community. Because, I mean, everybody needs a job. I mean, there are people who are unemployed. Even there are good jobs. You know, I mean, not everybody wants to work at McDonald's. Not everybody right, wants right. to work at Burger King. People want to move out. You know, it's, it's no shame in working in those jobs. But eventually people want to transition and get a better job. So, so, I mean, so, so my question is, first of all, you're, you're, you're in a district that's really, like, what, is it, what do you say? Is like fifty percent plus Democrat? Yeah, fifty plus percent plus Democrat is about thirty percent Independents and twenty percent Republican. I mean, yeah, it's a huge district. I mean, but you got to also look at my last race. I had thirty percent of the vote, considering I had to get crossover voters, and I spent low budget. I had three thousand dollars. Whoa, that was no money, no money at all. But I walked a lot. I walked in communities that I knew that I was able to like get, go through and stuff like that. And I did really well, considering the the numbers were against me when other opponents before me lost by ninety percent of the vote. So that was a oh, lot. Wow. So, I mean, big difference. So this time I raised uh, $546,000. Uh, whoa. So I'm doing really well. I've been getting national attention, going on Fox, and, and you know, it, things have changed. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to play this game a little bit. It sounds kind of like you're like a right-wing version of Ocasio-Cortez, this, like, young upstart who came in and challenged, you know. Yeah. Not, not in your politics. I don't want to equate you to, like, her positions, which are yeah, far, she's far too left. too far left, and I'm not far to the right. So Right, it, exactly. But it just, not in the terms of, like, extremism, but more in the terms of just, like, a young guy raised a bunch of money, came in, you won the primary, and now you're challenging somebody who is, like, I mean, Maxine Waters is extremely notable because of those comments he made in the attack ads. Of course. So, so, so uh, one, one more question. Like, I'm not super familiar with electoral politics. It's never something that I've been super focused on. Why is it that if in 27 years she hasn't passed anything, that she has such strong support, right, that the Democrats are just willing to vote for her just because, like, you know... Well, the, the problem is you have a lot of people in the community that become used to doing certain things. They get, they get used to voting for Maxine Waters. Uh, actually, the district changed back in 2012. But Maxine Waters hasn't really had a legitimate contender with actually fundraise money to go against her, to put her message out. I mean, if you don't have your message out in the district, no one's going to know about you. So they're just going to go along with the same trend. Now, if you kind of show yourself, and I don't think it's it's a Republican or Democrat thing. I think, you know, people think, oh, oh yeah, if they're Democrats, they're, they're beholden to the Democratic Party, and they're not going to go transition and vote over to Republican. I, I think people will, will see both sides. I think people, if you reach out, though, you have to reach out. And people have to see who you are as a candidate. And if you don't do that, then, I mean, that, yeah, that's that's your fault. I mean, that's what the Republican Party has been screwing up in California. Um, they've been screwing up with the with the Latino voters, the Hispanic voters all over the state because they don't they don't do anything to reach out to them, and I think that's it's time for us to do that. Let's you know let's try and step out of the uh, you know right. I think the conversation we're having is very much like you're up against Maxine, right? Yeah. That, that's what, honestly that's what's really interesting to me because she's been so prominent. But let's just we'll we'll, we'll take the time and say. Is there like a one core issue that you think is really important that that you want to bring about change? Yeah, something uh, you want to do. The one issue I've been campaigning on is uh, at, like having an after school program for for the parents. So let's say parents can't uh, they, they're working. Uh, we can have an after school program where we can transport the kids to this after school program where they're left there and they the parents can stay at work and they can work and keep their jobs and stuff like that. That way they don't have to take breaks and leave from from work. I think something like that would help out the community in a big way, especially my community uh, in the inner cities. Uh, it, that'll help out a lot because there's a lot of people that that can't find jobs uh, and necessarily they can't do that because they have a lot of kids. So you're you're, a, you're basically a blue district Republican, right? Yeah, yeah. I was just I was just a final thought. I was just thinking about how I think it's actually really good. I'm in Jersey mm -hmm. and we have Bob Hugan. 
Okay. And Bob Eugen's platform is extremely like liberal can, for the Republican Party, but he has to be. It's a, it's a blue state, right? There's, you, you don't you don't have to be. You can be fairly conservative. I mean, like issues like I'll give you like marijuana. I'm like I'm totally for uh, marijuana being legalized. I voted for. <laughs> you it. live I in mean, California. I live, <laughs> I live in California, and and I don't have a problem with it because I think small government, you know, shouldn't be intruding in people's lives. So I mean, people should be able to do whatever the hell they want with themselves. I mean, that's why you just believe in small government. Yeah. That's if you're a Republican, you truly believe in small government. So, I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's the big way I believe in it. So, are you going to win? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm really working hard. I mean, I'm not, I'm not running to lose. I'm running right, to win. Right. I mean, so you have to be in a mindset. I mean, there are people that have a mindset that they're going to get second place, third place, or they have a mindset. I think it's, everything's a mindset. If you have a mindset of winning, you're going to win. And if I don't win, I get really close, I'm going to run again and I'm going to win. You're going to do it until you win. It's not going to It's not gonna stop. And I'm doing really well right now. I've got great numbers. I mean, in a district that where we were told that we're not going to get even past 10% of the vote. So, I mean, we got 30% the first wow. time. So, I mean, so there, there are things that we are crossing. I mean, I think we're going to shock the country. Come November 6th, we are going to shock the country. And if we don't win, we're still going to shock the country because those numbers, the numbers that they told us hey, that we're going to lose by 90, we're not losing by 90. There's no way. Right on, man. All right, thank you. Thanks thank for sitting you. down. Yeah. If it wasn't made clear in the video, for me, you know, I'm, I'm heavily focused on civility and violence because I'm an on-the-ground person. And I think that's where my focus ends up being. I understand there's, a, there's way more issues. I'm sure Maxine Waters has, you know, way more issues that she focuses on. I don't know a lot. All I know is that I keep hearing these calls for incivility at a time where violence is escalating. You would think that after what happened in Charlottesville, you'd have everyone saying, please be civil. But that's not the case. Maxine Waters didn't call for violence. I understand that we said that in the, in the interview, but it's, it's, a, it's, you know, the snowflake doesn't blame itself for the avalanche. If all of these politicians keep telling people to get in their faces and push back, and then we see this violence, at some point I'm gonna have to ask, hey man, you know, take some responsibility and ask people to calm down. But there you go, I, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm about to head back to the East Coast, so I'll have more videos up on my second channel, youtube.com slash timcastnews, starting at 6 p.m., and you can watch those, and I'll be on a plane while that happens. You can follow me on Twitter at Timcast. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all tomorrow.